The amount of green pieces in this puzzle is crazy. Educa's bag number ordering system is even crazier. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. So you've probably already guessed, today I'm working on section one of my 33,600 piece wildlife puzzle by Educa. This is one of my dream puzzles. I'm very excited to get started on it. I'm just doing a single section uh, this time around. Um, but um, by way of kind of an intro to this video, I wanted to talk about uh, Educa's bag number ordering system. Um, it's completely bonkers. <laughs> so, I'll just, I think it's, you, you'll probably see what I mean if I tell you um, what I've discovered in terms of the order that my bags go in uh, from left to right, um, each number relating to a section. So here are my numbers and this is the order they go in. I'm going to pop it up on the screen for you just now. Right, so as you can see, <laughs> It doesn't go consecutively from the highest number to the lowest, moving from left to right. It doesn't even go from lowest to highest, moving from left to right. It goes second highest to highest to fourth highest to third highest and then fifth highest all the way down to the lowest. <laughs> so if that wasn't clear, uh, which I'm not surprised if it wasn't, um, Let's imagine that these numbers, these bags were numbered one to ten because there are ten bags in total. So let's just forget my numbers because they're all different numbers for different puzzles. Let's just imagine that they're numbered from one to ten. This is the order that they would go in based on the way I have it set up. It would go nine, ten, seven, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one. So as I said, quite bonkers. <laughs> I honestly do not know what in the world Educa was thinking when they were bagging these pieces up and labelling the bags. I actually thought that the, the numbers went from the highest to the lowest, moving from left to right. I watched a YouTube video uh, on this puzzle and they, that's the way that those people had it. Um, but I discovered that that wasn't the case when I received, after I put out my unboxing video on this and I, I, I put forward that theory, uh, I discovered um, from a couple of messages I received uh, that the order may not be quite so simple. And two other people who have this puzzle who reached out to me said that their numbering uh, was quite random and it appeared to be up and down and not consecutive at all. So that got me thinking, well, maybe I should check mine. <laughs> so I did. And indeed, my number ordering was random as well. But the weird thing is, it's the same random order for the three uh, different puzzles. Uh, mine and the other two people that got in touch with me. It's like they've got different numbers, but the ordering's the same. The 9, 10, 7, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All of that. It, it, it's the same kind of... It's the same random, <laughs> but, but it's completely crazy how they've done it. I don't know why. Um, so really, I wanted to put that out right at the very beginning of this video, because for anybody else out there who may be doing this puzzle or maybe thinking of doing this puzzle, please be warned. <laughs> it's, it's Unless you are happy to do the puzzle in quite a haphazard way and just build whatever section you happen to open up, um, unless you want it to be random like that, um, then look at your numbers and look at your bags. I'm sure this is all clear as mud, um, but this is just something I discovered uh, before I even got started opening the bags and doing the thing. Um, I, I, it was, it took like a good week <laughs> to figure this out. 
Oh my goodness. So that is my intro to this puzzle. Beware of Educa's bag ordering system. I'm just going to give a very quick shout out just now actually to uh, Russell, a guy called Russell. He's a puzzling uh, YouTuber. Uh, his channel is called Puzzling in Two Worlds. It's a really good channel so um, go and check that out but he has actually bought this puzzle recently and he got it for an amazing price but the the drawback to that is that um, it had been opened up uh, <laughs> Um, he bought it second hand and it had been opened up and all the bags had been mixed. So, <laughs> honestly, my heart goes out to you, Russell. You really do have a task ahead of you. It's definitely doable, I think. But um, yeah, that, that I think is going to be quite a tough challenge for you. But at the very least, you don't have to worry about silly bag numbers. <laughs> so every cloud has a silver lining and all that stuff. Um, right, that's it from me for the intro. Let's have a look at these pieces. Okay, this is it. This is the first bag of the 33,600 piece wildlife puzzle. This is a 3,360 piece bag. There are 10 bags in total. And this is the far left hand section. So the poster that comes with this is not very big. I've tried to do a rough sort of fold um, where I think that this section kind of finishes. So you've got sort of the back end of a lion, uh, a couple of lines there. Um, you've got sort of half a, like a bull uh, of some description um, and a little bit of that snake there. So it could be slightly bigger, slightly smaller, not entirely certain, it's not very accurate. But I'm just going to have it there in the corner to help me with sorting. There's obviously a lot of green on here, uh, which I suspect will need extra sorting. But there's also a fair bit of colour as well. So I think um, I should be able to should be able to work with this. Um, but first, I just want to have a quick look at the, the pieces and um, just sort of talk you through what they're like and, um, you know, like I usually do um, before I dive into the sorting. So... We've got another Educa puzzle. I've done one Educa puzzle on the channel prior to this. Uh, it was quite recent. It was the 6,000 piece entering the bedroom puzzle. And there, I can see already lots of similarities in the pieces. So firstly, the first thing I notice is that these pieces are slightly elongated, just like in the entering the bedroom puzzle. Again, I'll take some close-ups. So if you were to take away um, the knobs and the inserts on a standard shaped puzzle piece it would look like a rectangle more like it more than it would a square so they're slightly elongated so they're gonna either go in a portrait orientation or a landscape orientation now in entering the bedroom they go in a landscape orientation but i think from pictures i've seen of this puzzle that these ones will sit in a portrait orientation so that's something you know that's going to help out from the beginning kind of knowing which way the pieces are going to sit. Um, the piece thickness is around about the same as for the entering the bedroom uh, puzzle. They're fairly thick, not too flimsy. Uh, they've got the blue cardboard at the back. Um, I've seen already from opening another bag and also just from this bag, there's a fair bit of puzzle dust underneath there. So suspect this table will be blue by the time I've done this <laughs> um, and not white, but uh, yeah, um, so everything just looks to be really quite similar. Now there are um, a few different shapes, um, the usual standard shapes. Um, there's also, I've seen a few kind of, now then let me look, because there are a lot of standard shapes, but there's definitely other ones. There we go. So there's two here that are three outs and one in. Um, and I know that there's other variations on the normal pieces here. There's one out and three ins. If I can detach it from this other piece, uh, just there. So we've got a variety of shapes, but the vast majority, I would say, are the standard piece shapes, um, which is the two ins and the two outs. Um, another thing I've noticed as well is obviously edge pieces, but again, because um, these pieces tend to be slightly elongated. We've got edges that are a little taller and we've got edges that are a little wider. So the I think the tall ones are going to go at the top and bottom and the uh, the wide ones are going to go on the 
the left hand edge because there's three edges on this side with it being one end of the puzzle. So there's that. So these are all just little things that I'm gonna that use to kind of help me with this. The pieces are not overly glossy, but they're not overly matte either. Um, they don't reflect too badly. So, you know, that's not something that's gonna bother me, I don't think. I prefer a matte finish, but these aren't too bad at all. Um, and the other obvious thing that I've noticed is that there are a lot of these um, pieces with the wavy line on one side where you've got kind of a convex, um, like a bump and a concave uh, area where one just sits inside the other. And they did have some kind of random cut shapes like that in the entering the bedroom puzzle. They had a slightly different pattern to them in that puzzle. This one just appears to be some pieces that just kind of sit adjacent to each other with the convex and the concave. Um, areas kind of just abutting one another. Um, so, you know, that is another big thing really that I've noticed with these. Um, but apart from that, these pieces look to be pretty standard, pretty good, um, not too bad at all. The colours look vibrant, the colours, you know, they look like <laughs> the ones that aren't green anyway, they sort of stand out. Um, lots of nice reds and pinks I'm seeing here. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to giving this puzzle uh, a go, to getting started on it. I'm really looking forward to it. So of course I knew this sort would involve a large pile of different green pieces. So what I did was I just popped those in a separate box um, in order to sort later on in a bit more detail. Um, the other piles I sorted as follows. So I did the edges and the corners. Um, this is a pile of bright blue pieces and also butterflies. So the blue will probably be the macaw and some water and the butterflies is self-explanatory. Um, this pile is red and pink pieces, which will be flowers. Um, this is a pile of sort of dark purple pieces, which I think would cover the buffalo creature, the anteater at the bottom and the baboon. Um, then there's the white and light coloured pieces, which I think is going to cover um, some of the flowers, the white birds, uh, the buffalo horn and uh, one of the monkeys. There is a pile of lion pieces, uh, a pile of leopard pieces, a pile of snake pieces. Um, there is a small pile of pieces that I think belong to the little areas of water in this section. And then there's this pile, which is a bit miscellaneous. This is kind of dark pieces, which I think will cover things like the vines and also the kind of more shadowed areas. And that's about it. Okay, I've done as much of the edge as I am able to do. I'm actually starting this on the table at the moment. Um, I will probably build a couple of sections first and then move it over to the board. Um, I can't put two, like a bottom and a top section beside each other on this table. It isn't, um, she isn't tall enough, it would go off the edge. But I have discovered that um, I'm missing couple of edge pieces I think I've probably missorted them this one appears to be complete this bottom edge it's narrow and tall um that like one section of the puzzle is narrow and tall so there's only like 40 pieces along the bottom um and assuming I don't have one missing off the right hand edge then that's complete which means I'm missing two off the top which makes sense because I think they go together I think that one and that one go together and I'm missing about three from the left side. But the edge, as done as I can do it, hopefully I will find some in the next batch of pieces I'm gonna tackle, which is the red pieces and pink pieces and also these blue pieces and butterfly pieces. I'm going to make a start on those just now, probably starting with the smaller pile.
Anyway, I have tackled all those pink pieces that I separated out and all of the darker pink pieces and they were all around about the same area of the puzzle, which is this bottom left corner. And I've actually managed to attach a goodly bit to the edge and also um, a butterfly, which is here. And what I thought was a butterfly, but isn't a butterfly, it's actually, it was the tail of a kingfisher, I think, that I'd built. That is, um, on the picture, is just here. It's so, it keeps astounding me how blown up this image is. I know that, you know, with a puzzle this size, it's going to be, um, perspective-wise, very different to a picture. But this poster is also quite small by comparison. So everything just looks tiny on here. But obviously it's like quite big so like a tiny little butterfly is just this huge thing here <laughs> so um that keeps kind of tripping me up even though I've done a few puzzles by now and I'm sort of used to that it's just in this puzzle it's like exaggerated just because it's so big I think but I'm really enjoying it so far I'm really loving the colors um and I'm really liking that this corner here is starting to get a bit filled out but what this has done is sort of changed my tack a little bit not that I've really had a tack to begin with but I was going to tackle the reds next um after I'd done these pinks the reds um what's left of the reds are in here I have done a few of them because I put all these ones in uh this macaw here but these were very obviously feathers they obviously belong to the macaw and the rest are all lots and lots of tiny little flowers and they're all kind of at the top end of the puzzle and sort of scattered away, uh, right across the top. And I think rather than tackling those just now and having lots of bits like I've got at the moment, loads of bits of butterflies and things, I think I want to try and fill out this bottom section a little more if I can. So what I thought I would do is I've sort of come across a little bit of the, the lighter colours here, the kind of the whites where the stem of this flower is. Um, there's also quite nearby, we're getting kind of into the lions and there's a butterfly there. You've got this creature here, um, and the snake. I've managed to put together a little bit of that frog there. So I think what I'd like to do next is grab the sort of the light colored whitish pieces, which are here and try and put together a few of those bits, maybe fill in these flowers a little more. And also, I'd like to tackle the lion pieces, of which I think I might also find other animals as well. So, for example, um, like the leg of this anteater thing here, I think they maybe got mixed in with the lion pieces. Um, there's a bit of this butterfly actually missing that's kind of yellowy brown so that may have ended up in the lion pieces so i'm going to just kind of focus on this bottom section for now and i'm going to focus on the white pieces or the light colored pieces and the lion pieces i might also just get rid of these wee snake pieces as well because this tiny little bit of the snakes down here as well so the next step though really is to move all of this across to the board now it's just it's sort of it's convenient using the table while I can still fit it on. And I probably could do more sections, but it's just starting to look a bit messy. There's just kind of little bits everywhere. And I want to transfer it over to the board now. So these things are all going to get shifted across. And then I'm going to start on the next couple of piles of pieces. I'm very, very excited. It's coming together so well. I'm just, I'm still excited that I've started it. Um, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it so far. Okay, so moving on just now.
Right, so it's now time for me to tackle the red flower pieces. And I've organised them all, well, mostly, <laughs> in this box here. I've took out a whole bunch here. So the way I'm going to tackle these is I'm going to start off by doing these big hanging ones. So, like, there's one there that would then attach this butterfly to the top. There's one there that would then attach to this snake. And then right beside that snake, there's one there that would then attach to the leopard. And then another one there. So I really think doing these big kind of hangy ones... Uh, would be a good way to start with this and you can kind of tell which ones those pieces are because they're covered in the big red petals so I'm going to do those first and then I will move on to um, like these little tiny ones here that can basically go all the way down there and those ones there kind of a pinky colour that go down there and they will attach as well to these pieces here, which are like the pieces of kind of, I don't know if it's rock or if it's water in the background, but I've done a few of those pieces there as well, which I can hopefully kind of attach to some of these flowers. So it's time really for me to start kind of filling out this side now. This side's very much um, bulked out. Uh, I've even got some of the water pieces in. Um, a lot of the sections are attached to each other now, which is great. Um, so that's good, but this side is still very floaty, very bitty. So I'm hoping that these flowers will really help to kind of fill that bit out. So I'm just going to work on those just now. progress report I'm at the stage now where um these are my red flower pieces which I sort of stopped doing because they're all quite tiny it's hard to slot them in there's a lot of sort of green that goes in between them um but there aren't too many so I thought I would um leave those there these pieces here are all of the other pieces that I had um, just amalgamated into one box. So aside from greens, there are just these two leftover boxes. So the time has come basically to start on the greens. Now the greens are over here. And as you can see, there's quite a few, but already when I pulled the box out, I found a few laying on the top. Um, that I put straight in, ones that belong to um, the lions. So I think at this stage I should, 
I'm fairly confident. See, there's another bit of lion there. Uh, well, there. Yes, as I was saying, I'm fairly confident at this stage that I can do some um, sorting on these and hopefully start to put together a few more sections of green, start to put the floating sections together a bit more and just finish the puzzle off, basically. Um, it's not too deep a pile, but it is enough. <laughs> it is enough to keep me going. So i um, going to get started on sorting these greens just now. Right, it's slow going with these greens, but I am getting there a bit, I think. <laughs> um, so basically, I've done a little bit of green all over. So I've put a fair bit of this water area in, kind of linked up the lions a little bit more. Um, I've sort of pretty much finished that snake up there. Um, managed to get a fair bit of sort of this bit here, which is linked up the parrot to this white bird here. Um, I sort of put these over here because I think they go over here. I'm hoping they do. Um, oh, I put that together. I thought that was a leaf at first, but I think that might be some kind of moth or something like that. This just happens to be green. Um, but in the course of doing this, because I've been moving back and forth across the puzzle, I've sort of spotted things where like areas where I think I know where the pieces are and I've been dotting in and out of this box as well um, in order to fit them in. Um, I think really these pieces, which were all the ones with little bits of animal and stuff um, uh, that I haven't put in yet, I'm thinking these really ought to go in with these because they're all kind of miscellaneous now and that's also what they are. So I'm thinking just to tidy things up a bit, just kind of move those across to there um i'm gonna leave those there because i do think they go in that area and these are greens that i've again just dipped in and out of all the piles except that one i haven't really touched that one yet but i am going to come to that one very soon because i think those kind of leaves with the pointy sort of long thin leaves are all in the bottom section there's a whole bunch there that you can just see a bit of there's some up there there's a fair few down here and around here, around where the lions are. So I'm thinking if I tackle those, that will also really fill out this a bit more. So it's it's slow going, but it's just picking away at it gradually. And I am getting there, Just it's just painfully slow at the moment.
Well, let me tell you, these greens are really hard work. <laughs> this has taken so long to put in this amount of green pieces. And even though it doesn't look like I've got many left, I've got this white foam board here um, with all of these shapes on and all these funny shapes with the wee ridges uh, and bumps and things. Uh, they're just a couple of bits that are together. And these shapes are over here. That is literally all the pieces there are left. And it doesn't look like very much, does it? But there are hours and hours of puzzling here. Like, there, there really is. <laughs> it's just taken so long. Oh, man, I am seeing green everywhere I look. I really am. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm on the home straight now, but it could still be a few hours. <laughs> Having said that, I do see some light at the end of the tunnel. As I said, this section's finished now. It's actually taped as well. I've taped that. And um, this section has actually come together fairly quickly. There were some big gaps up here that I've filled in pretty quick. Um, so, you know, the further I go, obviously, the quicker I'm getting, which makes sense, but it's very, very difficult getting all these green pieces in. There's just so much of it. Anyway, I won't moan any longer. I will try and finish this puzzle. Um, yeah, I might need a rest for a minute. <laughs> then I'll finish it. <laughs> Right, so for this last stint of the puzzle, I have decided to um, shift the other section, which was complete, the the bottom bit of this section, because uh, it was just sort of sitting there and in the camera, but nothing was really happening to it. Um, and also, I have lowered the tripod a bit, so this has just got a little bit more focus. And I'm going to try something a bit different, because I really think that this would look really satisfying seeing all these wee gaps, which are all over the place, just grow and come together um, in a kind of a stop motion sort of a way. So I'm going to have a go at some stop motion. So you won't really see my hands, well, you won't see them at all, uh, but you'll have the satisfying um, experience of seeing this puzzle finally to its completion. I hope you enjoy it. Um, there are all the pieces left. So again, hopefully it won't take too long, but you never really know with this puzzle. <laughs> it's taken quite a while so far. Uh, but anyway, yes, finishing the puzzle off definitely today. If it kills me, I'm finishing it today. So here we go.
finally I have finished it. <laughs> oh my goodness, those green pieces felt like a marathon and a half, I tell you. <laughs> oh dear, they took forever. Uh, but it was so, so worth it. This puzzle is just gorgeous. I'm looking at it now and even just one tenth of it, I can see just how epic this puzzle's going to look when it's finished. I really, I, I can't wait to see it done. It's just going to be so good. So I'm just going to leave you with some final thoughts on the puzzle and on the build. And I'll be I'll be referring to my iPad screen, which is in front of me now and again. I'll try not to do it too much. It's just I forget what I'm going to say otherwise. <laughs> so, so um, as far as the image goes, like with my other edgy cup puzzle, the entering the bedroom, the colours are just really vibrant. They they pop out at you. And even though this this particular section of this puzzle has a lot of green in it, there's such a myriad of different shades of green. That, I mean, they really are kind of a, a a character of its own within this section of the puzzle and obviously against the backdrop of that all the all the lovely birds and butterflies and monkeys and lions and stuff just really stand out against her and it's all it's almost like 3d when you look at it like they pop out at you the colors are just so lovely so you know i i i can't fault educa in that sense i just think the images on the finished puzzle just look amazing Again, I can't really fault the quality of the piece itself, um, but I do, I do. There's no kind of, there's no kind of glare, or, or and I've got no complaints about the actual image. But I do have just a couple of gripes with regard to the pieces. Um, some of this is kind of preference, and um, some of it is maybe you know something they can perhaps change, maybe educa. I don't know. But um, firstly. The, the educa, it seems to go without saying that educa has a really loose fit. <laughs> you cannot move sections of the puzzle around, even small ones with this like four pieces together. They just crumble apart. Um, so, you know, loose fit, bit of a gripe with educa. This is not helped by the fact, in this puzzle anyway, that there are quite a lot of the pieces where you've got like a bump and a groove and they just sit next to each other and they don't interlock. So that almost kind of makes the, the integrity of the structure even weaker. So, you know, there's that. Um, I mean, you know, they're unique, I guess, and kind of quirky, but, um, as you know, in terms of fit, that might be something that frustrates. I don't know, but it did, on occasion it frustrated me a bit because not only that, but you would put a piece in place and you wouldn't necessarily be able to fit the adjacent pieces around it. So it wouldn't interlock straight away and then it gets shifted about and moved and things. So, you know, that's one kind of small gripe that I had. Um, the other is the, the general lack of variety in piece shape as well. About 95% of the pieces in this puzzle are standard shapes. Um, two ins, two outs. Which makes it a struggle when it comes to shape sorting, which, you know, I did have to do because um, the greens, there are a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> you resort to shape sorting sometimes when there's just so many you're a bit overwhelmed and the fact is there just aren't that many shapes. Having said that, there is another two shapes in this puzzle, aside from the standard shapes and the bumpy ones. There are the, the ones with the one in and three outs and the um, three ins and one out. So what I discovered from doing this is that... Um, if you if you look at the section um, in portrait, those pieces go beside each other in a long line across the puzzle from left to right. And that happens three times, which essentially separates the puzzle into four rows. And if you cut a line exactly down the middle of the section, you've essentially got eight sections of the puzzle which have the exact same piece cut pattern and it's repeated uh, and that's across the whole puzzle. Now, I had heard about this repeated pattern. I hadn't really, I'd sort of vaguely sort of thought, okay, that great. Didn't think I was really going to fall back on that as a way of building it and I didn't really. The one thing I did use though was um, the the three outs and one in and the three ins and one out piece shapes going in a line. I did actually fall back on that when I'd started the greens 
and I was getting a bit overwhelmed and I realised that I only had a few of these pieces um, but it was evident that they went all together so I, I just put them together just to get them out of the way and whittle down the, the, the sheer amount of pieces I still had left to put in and that kind of had the effect of separating the puzzle out which made it I don't know psychologically it just felt more manageable to look at it that way um, and that is something that some people you know those of a methodical uh, mindset um, that is something you could in theory use to fall back on um, just using the shapes and the repeated patterns to help um, you know find which piece you need um, which goes where so you know as I say I didn't really use that aside from just the separating lines um, but you, you might if you you know if you ever did this puzzle and you decided that was something you you know that would help then you could in theory that has also um kind of given me a um a lesson moving forward with this puzzle because there's nine more sections um i'm actually going to sort those sh uh, shapes out at the beginning um obviously i sort by color and texture and things like that and i sort the edges out usually it's only the edges that i sort by shape but because there aren't many of them and because um, those pieces all go next to each other I will separate those as well and that will help give me a bit more of a framework to start off with so I will be doing that moving forward with the other sections in terms of difficulty this section was hard work I'm not gonna lie that I, I went great at the beginning when I was doing the lions and the animals and the flowers and the butterflies and all the bright colors that was perfect that came along really quickly and it was wonderful and then I hit the greens and I just ground to a screeching halt it was so slow going it really was and I'd put it quite high on the difficulty scale just purely because of the greens I'm told that the the central sections of this puzzle are not so green heavy I guess you've got kind of an opening in the trees where you can see all the water and everything and it's a bit more it's a bit less green I think the end sections are the most green sections so I've done one of those at least <laughs> um so, but you know I'm glad about that because it really was really quite difficult but I think you know maybe those sections might be slightly easier than this one uh but this one I would put high on the on the difficulty level because of that it was it was quite hard going but I did enjoy it having said all of that I really I really enjoyed putting it together I'm so pleased with the result it just looks so lovely and I'm so relieved that all the pieces are there because I convinced myself on at least 20 occasions that I had pieces missing and then they went in and it was fine. Uh, I suppose that happens every time though, in fairness, I get the missing piece fear, but in this one, <laughs> I got it quite a lot, uh, but they're all there, so it's all good. So finally, I just wanted to leave you with a statistic and that is um, the size of this section. Um, so it's 157 centimeters high by 57 centimeters wide. And in inches, that's 61.8 high by 22.4 inches wide. And a section on its own is 3,360 pieces. So if you add another nine of those beside that, <laughs> then you've got a rough idea of how big this puzzle is going to be. Massive, it's gonna be massive. The one statistic I unfortunately cannot give you, and I'm sure you probably wanted to know, <laughs> I've been terribly lax with this it, it's it's I can't give you the time it took me I just can't I got I sort of started it on the first day or two and then I just forgot it's the school holidays here so puzzling time has been kind of a snatched thing here and there and I've just wanted to get on with it and I've forgotten so many times to take the timings it just seemed pointless after a while and it would have been totally inaccurate so I can't give you a time I can tell you that I started it on the 7th of July I started sorting on the 7th of July it's now the 31st of July I finished it today and um so you know took me just over three weeks but in hours I, I don't have a clue it felt like ages <laughs> if that helps it felt like ages but you know in sort of in the calendar terms it took me just over three weeks so Anyway, um, I will try my hardest to do better on the other sections with taking timing so I can at least get maybe a ballpark figure uh, at the end of it all. But uh, for this one, I just I couldn't tell you. I couldn't honestly tell you. Um, I can't even use the time lapse footage to give me a clue because there's so much that took place off the camera. 
um, just testing pieces and things like that. It, it just, you know, there, there would have been hours extra to add on and I just wouldn't have been able to come up with an accurate figure for you. So that's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. But I do hope that you've enjoyed the video. I have thoroughly enjoyed doing this puzzle. I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, it's all taped up now, so I'm going to put it away and um, they'll, these will just wait until I make a start on the next section. And uh, yeah, um, just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do subscribe to my channel. Um, and I will see you all uh, next time. Bye.